bit about your experience. Obviously, you were saying just a little bit there about your time here in Belfast. Oh, man, it's been wonderful, man. Uh, uh, Ireland is beautiful, man. We went and did a little bit of scenic views. Uh, man, it's beautiful here. Got nice rolling hills. Just the weather, man. It's a little bit cold for my taste. I'm from Houston, Texas. So, uh, man, it gets a lot uh, a lot colder here. Man, I heard this ain't even y'all's like coldest that it gets. It's just y'all's fall weather. So, couldn't even imagine come January and February for y'all. But uh, it's been great, man. The people here are so nice, so welcoming. And just the history that y'all have in Belfast has been amazing to learn and learn a new like uh, culture and everything. It's been great, a great experience overall for sure. And how have you managed to adjust to, to the times here? Um, I, came, I came out pretty early. I came out uh, last Wednesday. I flew out, so been here a little bit over a week, about uh, nine or ten days. So the first three or four days, it was pretty hard. I was waking up at four or five in the afternoon, and then like the sun sets so like early here, like the, it sets at like 4:30. Like, where I'm from, it, it sets like seven, seven thirty, eight. So not a lot of sunlight to deal with, and I was staying up to about one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. So, but uh, after those four or five days, man, really got to get used to it. Actually, started getting some good sleep. Uh, so it, it ended up working out pretty well. So you're happy to be here because I read something last week that obviously you're a big boxing fan. It's big boxing card on tonight, and you were saying, "Look, I nearly didn't take the cat the fight because I wanted to stay home and watch the fight." So you're happy <laughs> to come here and get a massive win. Oh, for sure, for sure. I'll be staying up late to try to catch that Kovalov and Warv. But yeah, uh, definitely, definitely uh, glad to come out here and get the win, even though there was some things I might have been doing uh, if I wasn't fighting. But uh, <laughs> definitely enjoy it. Anytime you can put money in your bank account, man, you're doing something good. So I enjoyed it. Now in the UFC, so talk a little bit about your win tonight. Man, uh, this kind of came out of nowhere for me. Uh, that's my first takedown I've ever. I don't even think I've done a takedown in jujitsu or like wrestling class. I think that's my first takedown ever that I've actually tried and it worked. And I don't even know why I did it. I was just kind of clinched against the cage, and I don't know. I don't even know if I was in my right mind, but went for the takedown, and then. Uh, was going to work my jiu-jitsu and then he stood up and then we kind of scrambled against the cage. I thought I was going to take his back against the cage, but then he went for a takedown and uh, he kind of flopped, you know, messed it up and I uh, happened to get that rear naked in. Man, I was I was taken surprised by all of it, really. It, it still uh, it hasn't set in yet. It kind of blew my mind. I was hoping not to get another submission win, but, you know, I'll take a win however I can get it. Uh, I was hoping to come out here and display my boxing skills once again, but I guess that didn't happen. I guess you never know what's going to happen in a fight, even when you're fighting. So, so it's definitely crazy for me right now, standing here. Were you surprised by the choke? It seemed like he was defending at the start. You switched to a shorthand rep. It seemed like maybe he'd give up after the hooks went in. Like, he was fighting very hard up until a certain point, and then your choke just went down with ease. I think because I, I think he knew it was it, as soon as uh, like as soon as I put the choke in, he kind of fought it right here, but the the actual arm was still under his, under his chin. And then one, I guess he kind of gave up on it. He knew the choke was kind of sunk in. That, that's what I got from it. And then I had, like you said, I, I had the overhead. And then I heard his corner, pull his hand down, pull his hand down. So I immediately switched to the, the pull right there. But I think the choke was pretty, pretty, pretty much in the whole time. That's how I felt it. That's why I kept going for it. So. But he almost went out as well, because how he tapped was with, with the back of his hand. He didn't even tap you. He tapped the ground very kind of feebly. So he almost must, must have went out. Obviously, he must have been tight. Oh yeah, it was definitely tight, and uh, he's a very tough dude, man. He's uh, he's fought some very tough people, so to come in here and get a win like that is uh, very, very, very gratifying for myself. You know, he's been in there with some big names, and uh, uh, was that the first time he had been submitted? I think that was the first time he had been submitted. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I knew, like, uh, I know in the Czech Congo fight, man, I saw Czech Congo took him down a couple times, and then like he popped right back up. So I was like, so even coming into the fight, I was like. Don't even try to take well, – I mean, I don't ever think about taking somebody down in general, but uh, I was like, dang, you know, he has really good hips. He has really good takedown defense. Even though they do take him down, he pops right up. So coming into this fight, I didn't even didn't even dream of taking him down, much less submitting him. So, like I said, my mind is still blown by what transpired in there. So, And your first fight could have been like fight a night because it was, it was a war, your very first fight. And now here you are getting a submission. You think you'd be looking for a bonus or – Man, I don't know, man. Uh, I, uh, there's some, been some really good fights tonight. Uh, the first fight of the night, uh, that, uh, Rasak, I think his name was. I saw him fight in uh, Legacy back in Dallas a couple months ago, and uh, that knockout was uh, pretty amazing. And then uh, you got uh, Cummings. He had a nice submission. So, uh, 
So it would be tough, you know. I would definitely like that. But then you also got the main card coming. So you never know, man, with a stat card. Like, uh, this was a really good card. I knew coming in it would be hard to get the performance bonus. And especially, like, a lot of the fights are very even. Uh, even, like, by the bookie standpoint, they were very even. So, I mean, you, you never know. You hope and you pray, but you, you never know. You know what I mean? What would you like next? Uh, definitely UFC Houston. Uh, that's about the closest it gets to my hometown, Rocheron, Texas. Uh, I definitely uh, like to fight there. Uh, it's funny because when I fought, I was fighting on the local shows. Not many people really would come to my fights. But now since I've been in the UFC, everybody's like, oh, man, when are you fighting in Houston? When are you fighting in Houston? Well, shit, you wasn't coming watching my fight when I was fighting in the local shows, you know. But so, but that, that's neither here or there. And uh, hopefully I can get on that Houston card and everybody can come out and see me and, you know, finally – maybe start getting some of the re recognition I think I deserve, so. And any, opponent, any opponents in mind? Obviously 2-0 in the UFC, you know, what, 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 who do you think you'd like to fight next? Man, I don't know, man. We've really been uh, messing around with the idea of maybe going down to 205. I mean, that's where I started my career off. But I mean, up at heavyweight, you know, I'm the faster, uh, more stamina fighter. So I don't know, man. It would be something to think about in the coming next week, see where my weight fluctuates, especially after this fight. And uh, kind of go from there. Kind of let uh, I've gotten the thing is that heavyweight I've gotten two really good matchups. So if they keep matching me up with good matchups I like, then I'll keep kind of doing it. If I feel like ah, uh, you know, they're trying to throw me to somebody that I'm not really feeling, then I can go down maybe go down to 205. Really, what I try to look at what's best for my career and what you know how can I prolong my my career the longest. You know, as a fighter, this is a short window of your life of your career. You know, and I'm trying to make as much money as I can while I still got you know enough brains to you know spell my name right now. So. Uh, we'll, we'll see, man. Definitely uh, talk about it with my management. I remember uh, before my last fight in August, I told my management, I was like, hey, after this fight, win, lose, or draw, you know, let's go down to 205. And then a month later, he's like, oh, man, we got a fight for you. It's a heavyweight. I was like, all right, let's go, you know, because I, I don't really care at the end of the day. So this is one of those things we're just going to have to flirt with and, you know, see really where I can be the most dominant and where I can extend my career the longest. Obviously, a heavyweight, you don't have to cut weight. So, what do you walk around at now? And you know, the, the, the cut previously that you made, the 205, was it a tough cut? You think you can do it again? I think I can do it again. Uh, when I used to cut, uh, but I, I was a lot younger. Like, I turned pro when I was 20. So, I was a lot younger when I was making the cut, but I wasn't cutting correctly. And then uh, here lately, back in uh, May and June, I kind of switched my diet up. And right before my August fight, I was walking around at 222, 25. And then like we're like, dude, you got to gain some weight. And so I started eating pizza and burgers and stuff like that. And I barely made it to 234. And then this training camp, I was like, well, fuck, I'll keep eating pizza and burgers, you know. And then I kind of got up to 240. So I was like, but, you know, it's kind of one of those things. You always want to finish fights. And so there's a guy, you know, a lot bigger, kind of like my last fight. Man, he took a lot of punishment, you know. When you got guys that are a lot bigger, bone structurally and just different things, man, uh, it's definitely hard when, because I feel like I'm the smaller guy. You know, you see these guys, they're bigger. You know, he, like, even though he weighed in a couple pounds lighter than me, he was still, like, muscled. You can tell me, I'm still kind of, like, uh, soft around the midsection stuff. You can tell that, you know, my body fat percentage isn't where his is. So maybe if I did get my body fat percentage down like that, you know, maybe I would be a force to reckon with at uh, 205. Look, if Roy Nelson says he can make light heavy, I'm sure you'd have no problem making light heavy. What'd you say? I said, if um, Roy Nelson says he can make light heavy, I'm sure you'll have no problem making light heavy. Hey, whatever he's smoking, let me get some of that too. <laughs> let me get some of that too. Uh, man, if you're cutting, man, nah, man. It's, it's hard enough for me, like, because uh, once I get my weight down, like, if I get on a healthy diet, you know, like I said, I'll be around 225, 230, and then, like, I'll start my cut from there. And even 25 pounds, when you're like me, I'm kind of lanky, and so I don't have much to cut as it is. You know, that, that, that's hard enough, much less for some guy that he used to cut to make 265. Like, come on. Like, now, does he need to be fighting at 205? That, you know, that's not for me to say because, you know, he's only, what, what is he, like 5'11", 6 foot? You know, so definitely body top wise, I'm pretty sure he can make it. But there's a lot more that goes into it, discipline, how your body relaxes, reacts to it, your age, and different things like that. So definitely we'll have to see what goes on in his career. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> All right.